What do halos really represent? Throughout history, all of our libraries containing knowledge of the ancient world were destroyed. But the secrets in the art they left behind tell us another story. The Pyramid Code documentary, Our Human History, as we were taught, is far from the truth. It is undeniable, with new archaeological finds, along with existing ancient texts, we are now able to make a clearer connection of what the ancients were trying to tell us in their encoded art and texts, which enable us to uncover the truth of who we really are and our capabilities. In fact, if you search deep enough, you will find that all religions have a universal truth. This truth is governed by the seven hermetic laws of the universe and bestowed the fact that our bodies are the temple to freeing this knowledge within each and every one of us which is what all spiritual icons preached. This knowledge is encoded in text and in art, like the Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. Renaissance and Alchemical Drawings The Seven Sephirot and the Kabbalah Tree of Life Seven Steps of Jacob's Ladder Seven Gateways to Heaven Seven Sins and the Seven Rays In the Islamic faith, they circled the Kaaba seven times. In Hinduism and in Buddhism, we have the seven chakras, which are energy wheels. This knowledge based on the trivium and the quadrivium was taught in the mystery schools of Egypt, where many famous ancients attended, such as Pythagoras, Plato, Socrates, Moses, and some say even Jesus. This hidden knowledge is based on astrotheology, meaning that all planet, solar, and lunar alignments that occur create magnetic frequencies that affect every living thing. Certain alignments in particular that are recorded to occur every 2,160 years and every 26,000 years are happening simultaneously now. The ancients coined these occurrences as the Golden, Silver, Bronze, and Iron Age. Absolutely everything is cyclical, and this cycle of ages is a consciousness cycle with the Golden Age at the top. The ancients had more advanced spiritual understanding than we do today, and had far superior technology. In the 1930s, in Baghdad, they found ancient batteries dating back 250 BC, used to electroplate their artifacts and give lighting. In the 1900s, off the coast of Antikythera, Greece, they found an ancient analog computer designed to predict astronomical positions and eclipses that dates back to 150 to 100 BC. Hundreds of tiny pieces of gold jewelry were unearthed near the Magdalena River in north-central Colombia approximately 100 years ago and only a few centimeters in size. Approximately a dozen of these pieces have been said to resemble modern airplanes, yet they are believed to be from the Tolima culture, crafted between 500 and 800 BCE. Ancient Vimanas, which were sophisticated flying aircrafts that were drawn in detail in the 400 BCE Mahabharata. In 1848, archaeological finds in Egypt of yet more sophisticated aircraft hieroglyphs that were revealed through weathering of existing overlay on top of even older hieroglyphs underneath. We have also found that the Egyptian pyramids and Stonehenge are celestial clocks Furthermore, every continent has several pyramids not publicized, as if it was some type of energy grid source. All megalithic structures, old and new, including military bases and major cities, are built on top of these ley lines, which are the Earth's electromagnetic grid, also known as a Schumann resonance. These structures are all sacred geometric shapes, like the pyramids, 
Pentagon, La Grand Arch, that also align with constellations or planetary alignments, as if there is some type of magic to this madness in precise architecture and positioning. As Pythagoras said, all is number. Numbers are sacred. Nikola Tesla had used these grids and the ionosphere to conduct free electricity in the late 1890s. It seems that someone has been hiding some important facts from us. Macrocosm and microcosm, as above, so below. To understand who we are and how we relate to this earth, you must start by researching the seven hermetic laws. Fibonacci math, human history, and the Earth's electromagnetic fields. What has been hidden from us is that we are first ethereal beings. We have a bioelectrical aura known as chi, prana, or ka to the Egyptians, that with the great alchemical work, the magnum opus, travels up our spine to our pineal gland, crown chakra, this traveling electrical energy is represented as the caduceus, or Hermes staff, Mercury, better known today as the medical staff. This is why pacemakers, electrolysis, laser, EEGs, EKGs work on us. This is why if a radio station does not come in clear and we touch the antenna, the radio station magically becomes clear. or why some cultures believe in the evil eye to ward off negative energies. When our heart stops, we revive it by sending electrical current through our body, same as jump-starting a car battery. We are vibrational, and everything around us is vibrational, and our antenna is our pineal gland. Once the pineal gland is fully activated, we awaken to a clearer reality of who we are and slowly gain understanding of what it means to view in the fourth dimension. The ancients knew this and is represented in art as halos or crowns throughout all cultures. This is also known as the crown chakra in Hinduism and in Buddhism. Additionally, this gives us a better understanding as to why the royals crown themselves with this hidden knowledge and sold us a lie while they control us like shepherd, leading his cattle, installing fear in us by using propaganda and wordplay, like apocalypse, which really means to unveil something that has been hidden. Words like occult, doth, and gnosis, which all mean hidden knowledge. It is all a form of wordplay, and if you do not know the true meaning of the word, it's hard to understand the true hidden meanings. Ancient hidden knowledge, Gnosis or Doth. Pictured below, the pinecone staff of Osiris is surrounded by the two serpents of the Kundalini, biochemical human electrical energy, it is also known as Chi and Prana. The staff represents the spine, the pinecone represents the pineal gland. This tiny gland is located at the center of our brain and has evolved in the production of a variety of important neurotransmitters, hormonal secretions, and facilitates altered states of awareness, as you will learn. Pine cones have always been occultically knowledge of the hidden, associated with spiritual enlightenment. Whether we look at the ancient Sumerian, Babylonian, Judaism, Egyptian, Hinduism, Chinese, Greco or Roman symbolism. The pine cone and serpents have represented the mysterious link between the physical and the spiritual worlds, which can be found in the human brain, something that all the greatest spiritual teachers throughout history taught. But as time has passed, religious dogmas and political powers controlled our world. We lost touch with this inner knowledge Alchemists refer to this as alchemy, of the human body, from lead to its awakened state. 
hence the golden halos depicted in all of our enlightened figures of worship. Coined by the Greeks as the Golden Age, a state of higher consciousness. The pineal gland, also known as the third eye, is represented by the pine cone in occult symbolism. This knowledge was taught in Egyptian mystery schools, which will open the doors to spiritual perception. Once the seven chakras are properly activated, a spirit body known as the Ka to the Egyptians, stating that we are first souls having a human experience in a human body. The cross is a pagan symbol and predates Christ, Greek word for gold, and can be traced back to the Sumerian civilization, which predates Egyptian and ancient Greek civilization by 6,000 years. If you research this cross, it is the galactic cross, together with the earth cross. When these two cross alignments occur in our galaxy, electromagnetic frequencies are emitted, magic happens to our emotions, and junk DNA gets activated. Just knowing the fact that women follow the lunar cycle in regards to menstruation, and that studies have shown that people are more aggressive or emotional during full moons, gives us an understanding of how these frequencies affect us. You could find this cross representation in pagan, Nazi, and Knights Templar symbolism, known as the Cross of St. George. The Knights Templars were responsible for the death of over one million Cathars and the Inquisition. The medieval times were all about keeping the mass illiterate and anyone who had any knowledge died a horrible death, keeping this esoteric wisdom to themselves, hidden away in monasteries and in the royal family. So now that we have established a better understanding of our history and who we are and how we relate to our planet, we could start to look at spirituality and science in a new light. Is salt a conductor of electricity? I think it can be explained by the fact that when you put salt into water, salt molecules, NaCi, divide themselves into eons, Na plus and Ci negative. As they carry an electrical charge, they are put into motion by the electrical field created by the generator, a battery for example. Thus, a current can flow in salted water and it is said that salted water conducts electricity. It's a bit the same thing in metals for electrons, which carry a negative charge. The more salt you put into the water, the better it conducts electricity. Pure water is actually a poor conductor because the only eons it has are the residual H plus and OH that form a neutral water and are the reason why we say water has a pH level of seven. We are 80% water, so the right amount of iodine increases our bioelectricity, which in my opinion explains why the ancient Egyptians would walk around holding a copper rod in the right hand and zinc in the left. This would raise the natural bioelectricity that was enhanced when around ley lines, which the pyramids of Giza are on. Take Emoto science experiments on water. Positive words or frequencies would form beautiful, intricate ice crystals, whereas negative words or frequencies would have the opposite effect. He was also able to take contaminated water and emit positive words or frequencies, sound this frequency, and decontaminate the water. Is this where we get holy water from? After all, we are 80% water. So imagine what positive and negative frequencies can do to us. This is what happens when we chant Amen. Um, or frequencies from gongs or crystal bowls get emitted. Water-like crystals hold information or energy. Furthermore, frequencies are emitted through TV and music. Makes you wonder what's safe and how big of a role and controlling the 95% of our subconscious mind this all has. What if we were able to consciously filter all of this? 
apply it and gain more access to the rest of our subconscious. After all, studies have shown factually that we all have the innate capability to remote view. I believe that all this is and can be changed by knowing and sharing the knowledge. We are, according to the celestial clock, at the right time on the evolutionary cycle of consciousness. Is this why we have GMO foods and fluoride in our water, common core curriculum, aluminum, and mercury in vaccines and daily spraying in our atmosphere, with barium, which becomes radioactive, and vaporized aluminum, which is proven to be a frequency blocker. In Agenda 21, the UN being implemented in hopes to control us from evolving to a higher state of consciousness in this celestial clock of ages, which the elite clearly have knowledge in all in the name of greed. Through my research, my educated conclusion is yes. Solution. Knowledge is power, and applied knowledge is freedom. We are all one. Namaste. And the earth is our home. Yes, sir.